All right. Welcome to another episode of Gary Williams Stole My Lawn Furniture. Today we have the glorious Ryan Ripkin from the Ryan Ripkin Show on his set. It looks like he, the NBA Jam Machine is right behind him. Is I was going to ask you, is the NBA Jam Machine functional, and uh, who's the best in the uh, on the pod? Oh yeah. Well, Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad we finally could get this going and feeling, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I feel way more relaxed in the seat. I know why guys, uh, the guys on my, uh, with uh, my crew want to be over this way. It's nice. The NBA jam, yeah, it is fully functional. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think I'm up there with competition, but, but Brad and Zach have the most competitive games. We'll put it that way. So yeah, no, it, it, this, we're trying to make this studio a living studio, meaning Whatever you see around here is what you can use. Imagine when we get some TVs up in here, Brian. You oh. got to come back for that. Oh, yeah, man. It's a great spot. Yeah, I'm glad, yeah, you, we got, I'm glad you could be here. Yeah, we got Brian over in the in the Ripken studio. We also have our buddy Sean Foy on. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Sean, he's been on a couple of our shows before. Huge Orioles fan as well. What's up? Yeah, Thanks for having for me. Former, former Orioles employee, Masson employee as well, so he's – Yep. He's got some connections with the Orioles yeah, as well. And we also got pretty much like a – we've got an MIAA rivalry going on in this little – in this screen right now. <laughs> I know. This really we, is. We yeah. got Calvert Hall, Gilman, and St. Paul's all Balls. in one screen, get, all getting along for a little while. <laughs> Give it time. I got a long Give reach. All right. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, for those of you who are not aware, Ryan's uh, Gilman team actually beat my Calvert Hall team in a championship at Rifkin Stadium, which was a little unfortunate for me. Um, there was a rain delay in the middle of that game that I think uh, somebody somebody called in the, the heavy hitter sport. But oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! I ne- no, never I'm, I'm just messing, obviously. No, I know, you know, and I get it. I- I'd be upset too if you blew a five nothing lead in the. Oh, uh, <laughs> God. You know, God be- or- or, or what was, I think one of the innings, I, I forget, unfortunately, is a couple errors that let us just squeak on by. And then I stuck my ass out and hit a ball down the line for a double. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then I held on for dear life when Brian Willis was pitching. So, hey, you guys win all the time, man. You got to give us one, right? <laughs> well, back, yeah. that, back then we did, but yeah, not, not so much uh, anymore. I don't know yeah. anymore, really, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, Dusty, were you one of those errors you better not have been? No, actually, I wasn't playing in that game. I think I was only a sophomore at the time um, when we played Gilman in that championship game. So I, I wasn't, I was not playing. I was going to be riding the pine for another year and a half. So actually, yeah. I'm I'm friends with with Pat's, with Pat Fitzgerald. So I, I bring, nice. bring up the Fitz every time. So Fitzy though, yeah. each time he goes, you know, I'm surprised you don't bring it up. I said I think you bring it up more than me, man, because we play pickup basketball together. And there's a photo of him and Cam Lauf, the catcher like almost colliding at home. I think Fitz got tossed that game at the end too on he a, uh, yeah. So good times. Uh, but if it makes <laughs> yeah. you guys feel any better. We went 15 and one, my senior year in the, in the conference dominated everybody and then absolutely fell apart for the playoffs. And then Calvert hall went to go, went, went on, I believe to win the championship. So, yep. That was, guys, that was also my senior year. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, so you, so you guys are the same, the same year. You guys were the same year. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2012. 2012. Yep. Yep. Oh, well, oh. shit. That's awesome. Yeah. Hurts. That hurts. Yeah, we lost. We lost two. Uh, two at Ripken, and then we won my senior year. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys yeah, could figure it. Out. Glad. To, glad you guys could figure that out in the end. Yeah, we got there eventually. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, but we're here to talk about some Orioles baseball. We're having a great season so far. Um, we're gonna do a little week in review. We always do that to start the podcast. We were three and two this week, split a two game set in DC with the Nats, and then uh, won the weekend series home for the Diamondbacks. Um, what stood out to you guys, um, just in this past week? Um, just uh, overall, Ryan, we'll toss to you first. Oh, hey, now, all right. Well, uh, I'm a big believer. The motto that I have is win series and avoid sweeps. If you do that enough consistently, you're going to be a really damn good team. And the Orioles have done that really ever since Adley Rutschman was called up, right? That is the moment in time where you can look at the team and go, damn, that's where things started to change. Now, over the last year and a half, 2023 into this season, they've done a lot of that. And, and honestly, you know, I'm really happy with, with what they've done. I mean, look, the Nationals, series was an interesting one to say the least but you find a way to split with them and they're a scrappy team right now with a lot of young talent probably a couple years away from taking that next step but for Baltimore 
it's the different ways that they're finding to win. So in that Nats game, you blow the lead, uh, you go to extras, you hold them off, you, you, you find a way. And then against the Diamondbacks, you kind of take control, close out the game, and then you come back in game two and you wash away it. So I'm really happy with how it is. And, and I think the thing that I love the most, I think this pitching staff, from bullpen to starting rotation is just tremendous right now. So I'm I'm feeling good, and, and obviously it doesn't matter now because you got to move ahead to face a, a rival, which I guess is a new rivalry right now in Baltimore with the Blue Jays. So should be yeah. a fun series. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I guess you're a little different from people on Twitter. Um, I think I tag, <laughs> I, t- I, t- I tag Ryan in a, in a bunch of shit. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, are, are you as fed up? Are you as fed up with this bullshit as, as I am? Because I'm so sick of hearing about people bitching. Like everyone's so they just jump. Like they just want to get rid of everybody after one bad, bad outing or, or a couple bad outings. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm super, obviously the bullpen's not going to be as good as it was last year. We don't have the best closer in baseball, so it's not going to be there. We're, mm-hmm. we're putting a Band-Aid on it with a Hall of Famer, which is nice. Past his prime. We all know it. He knows it. So, I mean, yeah. the guy, I mean, the guy's still going to gonna sit there and, and help us out. So, I mean, like you said, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. And we do not need to be peaking right now. I mean, we're just getting into May. So, what, yeah. this, is, uh, this was the, the issue. I think we talked about this last year. But, I mean, obviously, before we even had the podcast that – man, maybe we're peaking a little early um, and maybe we did. So um, I'm glad that we still got some stuff to work on and some stuff to work towards. Yeah. Um, Brooks, um, are you typing in bird noise? Are you like a gust? I wish I, I wish I was. I mean, it, it kind of feels like we're, we're like right on the course at, at where they do the heritage. Um, and, and I'm like, I thought this was all fake, but it's like Dustin had to go inside because it echoes out here, but. Yeah, you can hear the birds. I think yeah, I've got a bird's nest in like right outside my window too. <laughs> so that might be it too. You know, just nature throughout I, Canton, you know. I yeah. can't hear it in your trucker Real in thing. your trucker. <laughs> I mean to, to expand on what Ryan said, I, I'm gonna disagree with Ryan a little bit. The, the bullpen still scares me. Um, you know, bringing the bomb in. I mean, he's got electric stuff, but he can't find it. Um, I'd rather have Dylan Tate up here. Um, but and Kimberl, obviously we just talked about his past prime. You're not paying a guy to be six years younger, but it, it just scares me a little bit, but you're right. We're not peaking yet. I don't want to peak because if we peak now. We're not going to peak later. And so I would agree that I'm happy with where we are. Starting rotation has been fantastic, yeah. but the bullpen scares the hell out of me. Yeah. yeah. Kimbrel this week, last seven appearances, four, four innings, four and third innings, 12.46 ERA, but he did pitch a couple times this week pretty well. Um, he pitched in the seventh on Friday. I think Hyde, um, they were saying on the broadcast that uh, Hyde talked to him before the game and asked him if he would be okay pitching in uh, middle middle relief, late relief setup role kind of thing, and he said he was good for it. Um, so he pitched in the seventh inning Friday, scoreless inning, pitched in the 11th inning Saturday, got the win in a scoreless, scoreless inning in that um, that crazy, um, that crazy uh, extra inning game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, look, we, we kind of said before the season, we, we said, look, we're throwing a Band-Aid on Felix Batista. We're just kind of hoping for the best. And, look, he's going to have up and down weeks, and this is a long season. It's a grind. You can't get mad every time somebody has a bad outing. Um, it is a little scary, though. Sean, what do you think about the bullpen situation so far? Yeah, I mean, I kind of piggyback on what you guys said. I mean, I'm pretty pumped about everything about the team. The rotation's taking the next step. Um the fact that Burns' worst outings are like going five and two thirds and giving up two or three is just awesome. Like his a bad Corbin Burns is like a number two starter on our team for the last ten years. So bullpen yeah. has been up and down, but I mean, it's not great right now. But it's May, you know. I I don't think you know Michael Elias didn't ask me for my opinion in the off season, but I'm gonna assume when they got Kimbrel, like I've always assumed Kimbrel is there to just kind of get you through the season. I think everyone probably knew he's probably not the guy saving, you know, four of seven games in October. You're probably going to get going to need to go get a stud at the end of the summer anyways, but he can get you through most of the season. And this is just kind of the Kimbrel experience. He's going to be up and down and, you know, you know, pretty quickly whether he's got it or not. And if it was three years ago and you could get him out quickly, that might help. But uh, it's just, that's just how Kimberl is at this point. I think he's got got a lot of value. Um, I don't expect him to be 
closing game five of the ALDS in October. I think that will probably be someone else, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think they can get you through the dog days of the summer and, um, you know, they'll probably do some matchups where Coulomb closes some games. Cano does, you know, I remember last year, uh, Perez got a couple opportunities, right? When Bautista got hurt. So I'm sure they'll Mm -hmm. kind of piecemeal it for a little while. And even if, they decided they need to go get someone. It's May. There's not many teams punting now and, and trading stud closers, you know, in two months, that's probably different. But, uh, you know, if the, our worst thing we're dealing with is, you know, everything's perfect except the ninth, that's a good problem to have. You know, they'll yep. figure it out. Yeah. yeah I mean, I... we'll see. And we'll see. Cause I mean, Kimbrell, I mean, it's early still guys. So, yeah. so yeah. we'll see. Hey Brooks, can I, can I, can I enlighten some people right now? Since this is Please. what I like to do. Where do Please. you think you, where do you, where do we think the Orioles bullpen stays right now ranks in baseball? I think it's oh. probably in the top third still. I mean, I think their numbers put, are still pretty good. I put this out recently. Yeah, what I was going to say around ten, somewhere around. Hey, 10. I was, it, it, you took the number out of my head. Ten. The Orioles are eighth in team bullpen ERA. They're top five in team ERA total for the season. And specifically with Kimbrel, do you guys want to guess what his ERA was after this, the first eleven outings of the year? And also oh, this time last great. year, we and this, this time last year we were seventh. So we're, I mean, just to give you some context, I would guess so, under two. His first first however many outings. I mean, his first ten or eleven outings were fire. He was awesome. I mean, it's Monday. Make me feel good. So eleven <laughs> eleven outings in his eleven outings, he had zero. Or sorry, he had. One blown save, which was his first outing of the season against the Royals, which I thought he pitched really well. Yeah, he had some bad luck in that one. He had, yeah. he, had he had seven saves, a combined two walks over eleven innings. The strikeout numbers, if I read this correctly, I believe he had seventeen strikeouts, two walks, and a point eight two ERA heading into that Oakland series. So if Kim is it a rough May? Right, so when I look at this, and I, I'm, I'm not going to objective and say, hey, Kimbrell was great. He wasn't. There's no denying that. When you look at the physical side, the mental side, whether it's the combination of the both, I definitely thought the mental side, especially we might not even be having this conversation if he doesn't, if he gets out of that outing against the Nats, where he got the two outs, then he gave up yeah. a homer after throwing strike one, and then it was like, holy shirts and pants, dude. Then it kind of fell apart for him, and you could see mentally it was – messing with him so i'm not sitting here saying he's gonna be the answer in the future but i think this is the part where you gotta let things ride because it is may i'm gonna trust that he can figure it out if he was terrible from the start i'd go you know what the value is scary here the value's there but i don't know we're not we don't have to decide right now if he's gonna be the closer in september october right and i and i do believe that the orioles come july if they're like you know what what do we have here they'll go out and get someone if they think so but I'm still hanging with my now, guy, Craig Kimbrell, at the moment. Now's not the time. Now's not the time. Well, no, now's not the time whatsoever. But, I mean, that hard hit percentage number, that whatever – I don't know that statistic. It's a sabermetric. Mm-hmm. But that hard hit stat scares the hell out of me. It's like 80% of the balls that get hit off him are m- mashed. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. not good. Yeah, his I mean, K the, numbers are really good. Albert, it 16, yeah, it's not a 16 number to the second baseman. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. On the flip, on the flip, on the flip side – figure it out. And also, everyone's calling. Well, I should. A lot of people are calling for for Cano to be the closer and everything like that. And I mean, if we're going to sit here and, and go stats, right? I mean, Cano's like what nine for eighteen in his career. I mean, in, yeah, in he, closing the, in closed yeah. situations. So his stats in the seventh and eighth inning versus the ninth I love the guy. Are staggering. I mean, he's yeah, he's he's a very good player and obviously super valuable. And but he's, he's not he's not proven that he can handle the ninth inning. So I mean, obviously, well, I want to keep and, giving him opportunities and get learning experiences. Well, and I would say the last, the la- yeah. and I would say though what the last two, two to three outings that he's been in the ninth and close or closer to close situations, he's been great. I mean, so, I mean, the, the samples like we we sit here and say like and Bauman, right? I mean, we talked about this with Bauman too. I mean, the guy's got electric stuff. Are we are we willing to DFA a guy that's throwing upwards of ninety nine, one hundred miles an hour with electric curveball and everything like that that has proven to be a great reliever in the beginning of the season last year, 10 and one because he's had a rough couple of weeks. I mean, the, the jumping off a bridge off of these small little sample sizes is a little bit ridiculous. So, I mean, 
now's the time that Hyde and Hyde's trying to piecemeal it too right now, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. I mean, again, we're the second best team and third best team in baseball. So what are we complaining yeah. about? Yeah. I feel like yeah. we say it every week. I mean, this is an embarrassment of riches, and we're just. Yeah. We're we're really complaining about nothing. It's the best problem to have, right? <laughs> like this is this is the thing where where people go, we gotta go yeah. go get Mason Miller first off. Stuck. Yeah, who we give it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> team control. He's like, hey, here's 102 right down the dick. Yeah. Try to hit it. You know it's <laughs> yeah. coming. Soto, Judge, Gunner. Sorry, Gunner, yeah. but he's saying try to hit it. And so like a guy hmm. like that with team control, a lot you got to give up. So the thing that I actually love about this situation is that because Kimbrel's struggling, let these guys get put into high high stress, high leverage situations because you got to figure out who you're going to need when you move into September. Cano, I think, learned a valuable lesson last year. And actually, fun fact here, Cano had more blown saves after Felix Batista went down than Craig Kimbrell had blown saves all of last season. That's I know great. That's it's, great stuff. it's different context, but that's a great, it's, that's a great test. So yeah. Craig already has four blown saves this year. Obviously, it's documented, but the context of it, you need to figure out when when things are going to get chaotic and, and the stress levels are going to be high, who you trust. Looks like Danny Coulomb's in that role. He feels like he's comfortable. Jacob Webb has gone and, and shown some great moments. But so if the Orioles mm-hmm. are going to go at the deadline, they're going to have to sit there and go, all right, who do we have trust in? Who's available? What's the price? And then make a decision. And a guy like Mason Miller right now, for those saying, like you got to give up the farm – to get a high leverage guy like that. And the yeah. Orioles are like, no, 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 we'll play it safe. We'll wait. And uh, yeah. I, I think it's a great, great opportunity for the guys that they have. And I like artificial, I think- I, I, I'm not saying artificial. Uh, I like adversity early in the season. Yep, I agree. Give me yeah. the adversity yeah. now because you're going to deal with it yeah. in the postseason. I want it. Yeah. We, I don't think we really had it last year no. because we, I'm not saying we put it on cruise control, but we were so good last year. I yeah. want us to have problems. And we're yeah. having problems. There and wasn't much it. late game adversity because you knew yeah. when Bautista was in there, it was, you know, pretty much. Over, but yeah, yeah. You, use the next few months to figure out what role you want CNL Perez to be in. Figure out, you know, if Webb it can can be a, you know, a late inning guy for all, all year. I think last year was his career high in innings pitched in a while, and it was like 33. So see if he can figure out the workload. Figure out if Suarez is someone that can be in your bull- bullpen late game you know, legitimately or, you know, use the next few months to figure out what you need. And then I'm, I'm sure even if everything works out, they'll still find a way to, to get someone like last year, the bullpen was awesome and they still went and got Fuji. It didn't work out great, but they still, they were still looking oh, for someone. Fuge. Oh but, man. Yeah. Oh, that would, that would have been, that would have been <laughs> such a great pickup if that worked yeah, out. Guy. Yeah. Uh, electric uh, stuff. So like, you got Tyler I mean, Wells I... <laughs> coming back at some point, you know, you're going to need a spot for him. You know, maybe that's when Bauman, you know, things might get a little dicey on, you know, with him at that point, but you don't need to make a move now. So let that, let them try and figure it out. Well, plenty hey, of time well, for that too. One thing I want to say of- with that is that we don't know when all these guys are going to come back. Totally. Either. Like we know Grayson, yeah. I, I correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I haven't seen any update on Wells. Have you guys? He's in Sarasota he, I, I, and he's not, even, he's not even throwing yet. I, I, I think throwing. he's a while. I mean, he's going to be That's- like a, that's scary. June, yeah. July thing, I think. Yeah, I, he's not even. Cl- doesn't sound like yeah. he's close. So this is the thing that's going to pop up. Is what we're saying. So it's like, yeah, figure out what's going to happen. And again, like I, I Bauman, I've known for, I've known him every single year. Is actually in his wedding. You know, him and I. I guess you could say <laughs> we're we're pretty tight. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say that's pretty tight. Yeah, I'm just going to throw it yeah. out there. So I, I've seen. <laughs> I, I I am so bullish on him because I know his talent. But I'm, yeah. I'm objective too. The reality is, and he knows it's it's a business driven where you got to put together more consistent outings stuff wise it can rival anyone on the team and when you see him go two and a third innings the other night keep the team in the game and really put up zeros that makes you think all right it's all right there and this is why you need to kind of stretch it out and tate even though he's in the minors tate's still trying to get back to being tate and i think he could have stayed up in the bigs he's had options so it's a game within a game as we all know here so it's it's uh, this is a good problem. I'll tell you what, though, I'd rather talk about these problems and the Orioles being on top of the division instead of thinking like, you know what, season's over in May. What pick are the Orioles gonna have, and and when's the rebuild yeah. gonna end? You know, I'm yeah, I'm glad you brought up Tate because I, I wanted to, I wanted to talk about this Tate, even though so Tate performed while he was here, but did everybody feel like 
I mean, I'm watching Tate, and I'm like, his stuff doesn't look great right now, to be honest with you. Um, his advanced it's, numbers it's not, were not great. I mean, what does that, what does ERA, that mean? What, he had a good ERA, mean? but, like, his VLO was down. I think his FIP was way higher than his ERA. Like, I think his numbers – his numbers look good. Been. Numbers, but he also yeah. he's one of a few guys that's got options. So, you know, if someone numbers, else yes. had an option, yeah. they probably would have gone down. But numbers look good. Stuff doesn't look great, to be honest. That like that's the takeaway I took because everybody was all up in arms when he got sent down, and they were like, "Well, that's just DFA Bauman." I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding me right now?" Um. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. So that's another thing, and I th- and you you were talking about Miller Ryan. I think we have a better chance of going after Hater at, with how bad the Astros are right now and how bad they look yeah. at the moment. Unless they do a severe 180 right now, think, they they do not look like a team that wants to even play baseball at the moment. So we'll, we'll I would see. think if we're going to trade for somebody from Houston, it would be more likely Ryan Presley, who was their closer last year. He was a lot, yeah. who was a yeah. really good player last year, and they added to their embarrassment of riches in the bullpen with Hater. Hater just signed that five year, 90, 80 or $90 million deal with them. I don't think they're going to be looking to move him because. Even if this season is kind of like a hell year for them, I think in the next couple of years they're still going to be trying to compete because they still have one of the best lineups in baseball. So yeah. you, you also have to have a really great partner. Contract. Like you can say if you want Mason Miller, yeah, you can say you want Mason Miller, but maybe Oakland's like maybe yeah. we want to keep Mason Miller. He looks like a stud. I um, want Prime Mar- Mariano as well. So I mean, yeah. we can all get <laughs> win on the lottery. So. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on from the bullpen. Yeah, we're yeah, moving we on from, from the bullpen. From we have to. We, we can talk in circles on this one. I want to talk about Jordan Westbrook putting together oh. an all-star third base season out of uh, out of a lot of speculation in the offseason. A lot of Orioles fans, at least, saying, "Look, we have a loaded infield. We probably don't have room for this guy, and he's just been Mister Consistent for us." He's second in, among third basemen, AL third basemen. This is from Cam Bryce. Um, second in average, second in slugging percentage, second in WRC plus, third in home runs, second in RBIs, OPS, first in F four. I mean, this guy's is that good? Our third baseman is that good? Do they rank mustaches <laughs> in the major leagues? <laughs> uh, I think we should put out a list. <laughs> Do they there. rank them? I mean, I think yeah. we should put out a list. He's so underrated. He's been consistent. And the fact that he's bouncing back and forth between second and third is like, you know, a lot of people don't realize how hard that is for someone who's not a 10 year vet like that. You know, that's pretty impressive in itself. He's just hitting everywhere you put him Um, for like a team that's just stacked with young studs, you know, that were top five picks. You know, it almost seems like he was a steal and he was still a first round pick. Like He's just just so easy to root for. Um, Yeah, he's he's been awesome. Um, while we're on this topic, still baseball, I have a trivia question for all you guys. Okay. Well, hey, now. We can soak on it. There we go. How many MVPs did Babe Ruth win? Oh, wow. Well, shit. Uh, I, I uh, think I have, I, have a, I have a guess. Fire away. That's the point of the trivia question, man. Uh, zero. I don't <laughs> think was the MVP announced or was it, was it a thing back then? Zero is incorrect. Frank, could you sound more hungover right now? Leave me alone. <laughs> the deep voice. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, do you, have, Ryan? Do you have any specific thoughts on Westberg? Are you, are you in the same boat as us? Um, just excited about where he where he is right now as a player. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna table my the trivia question for a second and yeah. let that marinate. Do you know it? I don't off the top of my head. No, I, I don't. I, I don't have the the random baseball stats memorized. Surprisingly, everyone thinks growing up a Ripken, I should know every possible thing. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I do feel like I got why, a pulse on a lot of guys. Why do they think that? Uh, I don't know why it is. <laughs> you know what's funny? I will say this: if if I knowing the game. If I hated the game of baseball, I promise you I was still going to know the game of baseball. I love the game of baseball, but mm. that's just how much is ingrained in the in my family. So I, I watch it, I study it, and even with the times that I'm like, Dad, I don't want to talk about a secondary lead in the third inning with one out and where the cutoff man has to be specifically, blah, 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 blah. Now I, I have it ingrained. And now I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for it because I watch the game differently. And now this kind of leads into Jordan Westbrook. So I got to spend a lot of time with Westy in 2021 coming out of covid there were six or seven position players and i'm sorry if i'm missing a guy but it was in spring training there was me adley gunner taryn vavra i know i'm gonna miss another one but then jordan westberg 
was and Maverick Hanley a catcher, but Jordan Westberg, you know, for this story. And Westy, from the moment he took a live batting practice AB off of one of the pitchers on the backfield, I remember I was putting a uh, some pine tar on my bat, I had my head down, and I just hear this whack, and I'm like, "What the hell was that?" And it's just this missile that hits dead center. I'm like, "Damn, that is loud. That just sounded way different." Now Gunnar different Henderson. Sound. Gunnar Henderson is also a different breed. I could, I could talk about that for a while. But Westy was a guy then that I followed, and I saw him, how he moved. I always thought he sneaky could even play shortstop because that's what he was. I thought he is so dynamic, and he doesn't get enough credit for the athlete that he is and that his bat is elite. And it got, what, or it got caught up because of the talented players that the Orioles already had. And when he came up last year, one comment I got from people was, well, why, why? I thought he had all this power. Why wasn't he showing the power? And I'm like, well, he wasn't playing every day. And I said, it was a lot closer. He had about three home runs that were about three feet or less from going over the fence. He just hit missiles off the wall. And one thing he did less of last year when I broke him down, and you're seeing a lot of that is it's a strength of his, when he uses right center, he is unbelievable as a hitter. And I mean unbelievable. And, and I did a breakdown before the season started, and I said, I'm not, this will not shock me at all. And I expect Jordan to be close to leading the team or near the top in home runs, all offensive production, RBIs, whatever you want to call it. And right now, he's tied for the team leading RBIs with 27. He's tied with Adley Rutschman for the team average, and he's tied third with home runs with six. But the thing that I love the most about Westy, he's his demeanor stays here. And he has the ability then to rise to the occasion. And it's one thing to say, oh, you have ice in his veins. What? Like, he's actually like an iceberg or Westberg, whatever the hell we want to give the nickname to him. Oh, I like that. The dude, I like that. We actually talked to Kowser about this when I had, it was Kowser and Westberg on. And we're like, what the hell do we call you? And actually, there's a meme out there on Twitter or X yeah. where we have Jordan's face on an iceberg. <laughs> and um, nice. so you guys, you guys can go look that up. But it sounds like a new Charleston t-shirt. Shirt. Yeah, yeah. Right. We're wearing the Moo Man shirts. And Kowser <laughs> loves all this. By the way, I got. I'll, I'll, I'll find a way to get Kowser one of these shirts. He'll appreciate Perfect. it. You get one with like the iceberg and then a Titanic with the Yankees logo on it. Oh, <laughs> oh, but, but to close it out with my thought that Westberg's a guy – that he there's a reason why they traded Joey Ortiz away is because they made a commitment that say he is going to be the guy that we want to move forward with. And I thought it was the right move. I love Joey Ortiz, but from the second I saw Jordan and watching him since then, I thought he was going to be a cornerstone for this team for the next 10 years. And so far he's looked pretty damn good. He's an all-star type player right now. And I'm not even trying to be funny when I say this, he looks identical to JJ Hardy. Yeah, the way he wears the flip up shades and yeah. then the mustache. Yeah, so just, if he had the flavor saver, that would make it, you know, spot on identical. <laughs> yeah, and we said this before the season that Joey Ortiz was kind of like we're like, man, like it would be nice to keep him, but he's kind of the odd man out right now, yeah. which kind of sucked. But I mean, and that's how I feel about Norby right now. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be. He's just, well, he's just man, complete. There's not I, like I can't think of anything he doesn't do well or like i don't think there's anything he does poorly he you know he's got power hits for average has good at bats good defensively he can swipe a bag he's just he's like a blue collar he's like a blue collar yeah. player you know like he doesn't do anything flashy but he does everything the right way like if you hit something hard at him he's just gonna chest it up and throw it the first like yeah. he's not not doing these crazy batting stances like he's just got a simple batting stance it's very simple stroke like it's just everything is very bland but everything is very good he feels like baltimore position. He is exactly what Baltimore is. He's done dog. <laughs> He's done dog. There you go. He's done dog. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how long we have Ryan here, but I do want to talk about this upcoming week we have. Um, yeah. We are home for the Blue Jays in the next three next three days. Um, Ryan actually on his show on the Ryan Ripken show. Go check it out. Uh, had our friend Tim Meza on uh, this morning, um, and we'll have him on our show tomorrow. But we want to talk a little bit about this Blue Jays matchup, a little bit of a rivalry that it's developed the last couple of years. Um, they're in last place in the division right now. They're 18 and 22, but 18 and 22 is just they're they're right on the cusp of 500 500 ball. Um, what do you guys see um, upcoming in this matchup? We got Burns, Bradish, and Irvin starting. Right, I'm happy that we're man. avoiding Gossman. That that you know. He's yeah. been a stud, so that'll be nice. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, the Blue Jays to me, and I mean, I haven't watched a ton of them this year, but I've been seeing them on box scores. They've always kind of been, you know, I've never really understood them. Like they've they've always had good talent, good pitching staff. I know Schneider gets it is on the hot seat, and gets a ton of heat from fans and media. So maybe he's the one holding them back. I, I don't follow them enough to know, but their their lineup is always pretty deep. They just haven't put it together. Now, I mean, they did make the playoffs last year. I think they got swept. Um, but they're you know. Buck used to always say when teams were struggling or when someone was struggling, like someone's going to pay, like they're going to break out at some point because they've just got too much talent. I hope it's not this week. Um, I'm expecting it to not be this week, but uh, I don't think they're a fifth place team all year. Now that the division is stacked, so someone's going to have to finish fifth. But, um, but I mean, it wouldn't stun me if they got on a run and, you know, and started, you know, started playing better ball. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping that doesn't happen this week, but I'm, I'm definitely intrigued to see, see how it plays out. They've got a good staff and it's three good pitching matchups. Yeah. Ryan, let's, let's throw it to you. Cause I know you gotta, you gotta run here soon. Oh, well, yeah. Well, sure. Uh, I got a little extra time here, I think so, but I'll say okay. this, which surprising, uh, I, I, the Blue Jays, I picked them to win the division last year in 23. So you're like, you look at them and you go, hey, that looks like the most complete team on paper. But this is why paper don't mean shit. And you got to go out there and play the game. And for Toronto, they haven't put it together. Consistently haven't put it together. And I don't know if this is it's it's a telling sign or if you're a Blue Jays fan, you can be optimistic because they are bottom of the barrel like 25th or below on the pitching and hitting side. So I believe hitting side, they're averaging 3.58 or so runs a game. Pitching, they are 25th in the league, I believe, in earned run average, you know, runs per game as well. So you're sitting there going, damn, it makes sense why you're not doing well, but you're only four games under 500. And then the other shocking part yeah. of this all is, is that their star players aren't, playing like stars and their other bench players aren't picking it up. So Vlad Guerrero Jr. started to get out of it and he's hitting the ball pretty well. But Dalton Barshow is their leading home run hitter on their team with six. Springer and Bichette, guess, yeah. Springer and Bichette are just uh, hovering at 200 right yeah, now. hitting. That. And so you're looking at that and going, if this Blue Jays team is going to have success, you're saying someone's got to step up, but multiple guys that they need to be constant aren't succeeding. Now, the pitching staff is supposed to be their strength, specifically their starters. Their bullpen has been atrocious this year so far. And, you know, it only takes one series, one game, one week to get back like you guys have talked about. But when you're looking at this, the Blue Jays are really going to have to find a way to score runs, something that has been a big struggle. Now, I, I know Bo Bichette is a guy that can catch lightning in a bottle, no doubt about that. But the biggest thing is probably going to be if the strength right now for pitching is this Blue Jays starting rotation and Barrios is going and Kikuchi is going, you know, you got to try to get ahead and hope your bullpen can withstand the gauntlet of the Orioles lineup. I think the Orioles lineup is the deepest in baseball. The Dodgers and Braves, rightfully so, lineups are disgusting. But one so through nine, yeah. one through nine for Baltimore, it, they can terrorize you. The fact that Jordan Westberg and Colton Kowser for the longest time were hitting seven, eight in that lineup is terrifying. And so I, I think that it's advantage Baltimore if you're able to put up runs early or it's close late in games, you got to feel good and comfortable with what Baltimore has done compared to what Toronto has. It. Honestly, I feel good as a Baltimore fan against anybody at the moment um, in any situation, really. But like you said, and we uh, Ryan had Tim, a uh, friend of the show, Tim Mays on uh, yesterday. We'll have him on tomorrow. He, he hasn't been himself this year, and he'll, he'll mm -hmm. be the first one to admit it as well. Um, bullpen reliever guy. And it's just – hopefully it's a matter – well, not hopefully. I told Tim, I was like, I'm only going to root for you in, unless you're playing the Orioles. <laughs> but, um, eventually we have to think, like, they were one of the top bullpens in baseball last year. They're going to turn it around. They're not – too terribly different the starting pitching and we talked about this last week is Alex Manoa is I mean I think he stinks to be honest with you um I think that first season where he was electric was kind of a two seasons. In a, in two seasons whatever it was I mean I've watched him the last couple of years and I'm like his stuff just does not look good to me mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to say it but like 
it just doesn't look like major league stuff to me. And I'm, um, whether it's his look location, his stuff, actually, whatever it does, it just, everything just does not look great to me. Um, so I think, I, I mean, this could be a sweep just the way they're, they're not really playing that well. But again, like I'll take the Orioles against anybody right now. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you talked, we talked about the bullpen at nauseum, like, I don't care. I think I think we could put up ten runs a game against these guys. Um, One thing I, I, I like how talk, just just, just my opinion. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. You go. I like how adaptable our lineup is. You could really, I mean, you could put Atley at eight. Yep. And then you could put Westberg at two or lead off. Like I just love how adaptable we are. Our lineup is so scary. And I, like Brooks just said, and we've all kind of agreed upon, we're terrifying the teams. Uh, I, I, one thing I do want to ask Ryan before he has to go. Um, so this uh, this break we have on Thursday, we have two se- two sets of games this week, um, three against the Blue Jays, and then we have a day off, and then we have three against the Mariners. So we're off Thursday. It's the last day off before a run of 13 games. Do you think the players are aware of that kind of thing, or do they circle that on the on the schedule before the season maybe? And how does that, um, how does that grind go um, for a player? Um, Ooh, well – I think honestly, if you're hot, you want to play every damn day. You don't want an off day. If you are struggling, you can't wait for the off day. I think right now it's early, so they're probably not feeling it. I really honestly think when June hits and they have one off day scheduled for June, and that's really this is kind of like a hey, like let's get you prepped for this, you know, like let's see how you do with the first stretch of games here. But then once you get to June, that's where it's really going to sink in. How do your legs feel? How does your body feel? And how's that arm where you're going to be put to the test? So I think it's still too early for them to, to, to think right now. It's honestly, when I remember having the off day, I was just like, dang, this is nice if I wasn't doing well. If I was doing well, it's like, damn, I don't want to lose that hot streak, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And Seen you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what, after the Reds game, the Orioles are going, damn, we just swept the Reds and – we're feeling good. And then they faced the Nats and it looked like that they hadn't played in a week, you know? And yeah, like, yeah. that's, that's just the yeah. reality of it. So it's more about for guys staying in rhythm at this point, to be honest. And, you know, but I'll tell you what, um, playing all those days in a row, at least it's in June where it's not supposed to be so damn hot, but it's a tough schedule. When you look at it, they got a really, really tough schedule. And I think that's where guys really, you're going to figure out how your body's feeling and, and then realize, well, oh shit, after that month, we still got July, August, September. And then, and then the real race fully begins. And I think that's the crazy thing. We're at, it's May 13th and they're about yeah. to start yeah. this 13 games. And then they still, what they're 26 and 13. Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. That's right. so they got, yep. they got 39 games down. They got 123 to go. Yep. And boys, we got two months. We got, we got two Boys. months of the All Star break, guys. I mean, yeah, but before we uh, before we have to kill this, I want to ask Ryan a couple questions. Uh oh. Um, removing your father's involvement. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part about the new ownership? Um. Well, uh, that wasn't even my favorite part about it. You know, um, that was him being involved. On that side, I am happy for him personally because I know it's how much he means to the team. But what I love is that David Rubenstein's passion and enthusiasm. Mm. Same with Mike Arrighetti with the team. Uh, haven't had a chance to meet Mike yet. I'm going to have a chance to talk with him in the future. Mm-hmm. But David, what you see with him interacting with people is, is how he is. Like that's that's not that's mm-hmm. not no bull. That's not faking. He's from Baltimore. He understands the people. He loves the community. And I think it's so crazy. This is not an, a baseball owner's thing. I just think this is sports in general or even business in general. How many times do you see a guy that constantly wants to be in the thick of it every mm. chance he can get? And he even says, I want to show Birdland that I want this just as much as you guys want it. And so I think that's been the cool part is that he's entrenched in it. He believes in it. He knows it's exciting, and uh, he's fully invested in it. Now, I think I'm curious what everything will look like in the next couple of years when it comes to contracts and what you're going to do with renovations or what you're mm-hmm. going to do with putting your fingerprints the way that you want to. I think that's the part that, that's appealing, but I think what he wants the fans and community to know is that he 
wants them to know how much he appreciates them. And this has been 40 years since the team is 41 since they won a world series. Mm -hmm. And he wants them to know that we are all in it together. And it, it, this is a personal opinion, boys, you guys can chime in whenever you want. It seems like if we bought the team, mm -hmm. we would run it like he is. Like yeah. we want to be a kid again yeah. and yeah, just yeah. enjoy being an Oriole fan. Oh, no doubt. And, and that's Definitely. that's what I see when I see him slapping hands and throwing hats and spraying people. And, you know, it, it just seems like it would be me owning the team. And that makes me feel very happy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What are we going to get a, Justin, get a Ripken splash debut? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm afraid. I'm afraid because I don't want to mess up. I think actually Cole Irvin was saying we had him on the other day. He's like, "Yeah, Adam Jones did it. Adam can't do it again because we were terrible. Like we didn't hit. <laughs> yeah, like, right. I don't want to be that guy. Just like yeah. you know, Rocco DeSandro, who I who does work with me and is, does as a sports anchor for Fox 45. He told Cole, like, man, you've done something you've never done before, man. You've three straight scoreless innings. I'm like, Rocco. Come on, man. Kind, kindly leave. Come on. Don't do that. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do that, man. And, and, and then Cole, gave, that. Cole gave it up the home run, but at least Cole pitched well again and, and all of that. But the superstitions are there. I, if the opportunity presents itself. It's jinxing the kicker, man. Uh, it is. Yeah, he hasn't missed free throw in 90 shots. And I, I, will, I will give Rocco at least a little leeway here. Before Cole gave up the home run, the announcers even said, Cole's on a great scoreless streak and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? All of you guys are <sighs> playing. But yeah, to answer your question, if they want Thank you, to, Apple announcers. <laughs> Woof. Yeah. If, Woof. if they want me to go out there for uh for the splash zone, I am all about it. But as long as oh, they yeah. win, I don't if they lose and I'm out there, I'm out. I ain't You're being a part of it. Yeah. Nope. And probably not for the City Connect Knights, because I think there's a worse chance of oh. team yeah. success than not. Even though they won this past Friday, still a little bit on the fence. I'm superstitious, guys, with baseball. <laughs> All right. I am creature of habit. Next, Ryan Ripken question: Who would win in a game of one on one between your father and you Maybe. right now? Maybe. There you have done. Well, I mean, right <laughs> now, right now, but even <laughs> hey, ten years ago, yeah, I'm still kicking his ass back then. I broke his nose when we played one on one one time. It was actually like one of the last times we played against each other. He guessed right on a spin move, and so I went back to my left, being a lefty, and he put his face down towards the ball, and I had my elbow high and just wham. Now, it was the seventh time he's broken his nose. It's his last time he's broken his nose. <laughs> I had Matt Holiday on talking about that, the story with him. And he, and he asked, he goes, did you feel bad about it? I go, no, no. not in the moment. <laughs> Hell no. I said after it, but in the Back. moment, Matt's like, yeah, I know it's that competitive edge. I'm like, yeah, you wanted to beat the shit out of your sons with the home run derby. And he's like, yeah, I just show them who's boss still. That's and for awesome. my dad, it was like, you know what? I'm sorry about your nose, but... You put your face down there, you're gonna get cooked. I'm smacking you. So I did. Back, right, you back in the day, back in the day, was it you and Austin Knight versus uh, your dad and his brother? Uh, what for for basketball? No, yeah, no. for basketball. No, Austin and I would just come. Austin would just come over, and we would just smack balls down at the field. And then we actually had a weird way of picking up baseballs. We'd get like the Gator John Deere's and just go full speed and just lean out of the car and pick it up. That's what we really did. Yeah. Basketball. <laughs> I, I love Scoops Austin, good. but I, I don't know if he'd be if I'd be picking Austin to be my teammate for for basketball. I don't know if that's yeah. especially baseball, though. Hey, I'm all about yeah. Austin Knight. Shout out Austin Knight. Shout out Austin know, Knight. Love uh, him. Great, great, great ball player in the Baltimore area. I love, right. love that. I game. got one. I got one more question for Ryan. Then I'll answer the trivia question. If anyone has another guess, please. After this question, um, you got one pitcher, Game Seven of the World Series, any era in their prime. Who you got? One pitcher, any era. Oh gosh, in their prime. So it's like ninth inning, or you're starting the game. You're starting the game. Ooh, this is your dog. This is your horse. This is who you want. Oh mm, man, that's a good question. That's very. Good. And and everyone can chime in here. I, I'm going Pedro Martinez. Oh, Fuck. electrifying. That's mine. Yeah, that's an electrifying one. Yeah, I'm going the big unit. The big unit, big lefty. Yep, gotcha. Randy Johnson. That's probably yeah. what I would do too. All right, so we got two Pedros, we got two Randys. I'm trying to think back to the '90s, early 2000s. I mean, you can go Sandy 90s. Koufax if you want. I mean, you can go something yeah, yeah, crazy. No, we're not. Going I mean, we didn't watch him pitch there. though. You know, I mean, that's you hard go to with say. Like Kevin Millwood or Scott Erickson or Steve <laughs> Stone or something hey, you can, like that. You can ignore us, you know. <laughs> like, you Joe Saunders. <laughs> Joe Saunders is a dog. 
<laughs> yeah. That R- wild card R- game was. Yeah, I remember that. Damn, that's that's tough. The the one that sticks out, Randy, because that's like every pitcher's or hitter's nightmare is Randy Johnson and prime Randy Johnson. Um, Just that release. I mean, he's he's fifty four yeah, feet away from you at the point. Yeah, that, yeah. seven feet. I, that would that like. <laughs> Being a lefty too, I would shit myself. But you know, um, John Cruck eleven already. He's on top of yeah, the fucking did. mound. And that's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. John Cruck, like Randy's, like, yeah, I'm just gonna throw this over your head, but you're gonna be scared shitless. And it's like, <laughs> that's me. Uh, I'd probably I'd probably lean Randy in that situation. Uh, I just yeah. think it's just yeah. if he's on, uh, I don't want any any part of him, and, and I I would trust him, no doubt. Fair enough. I, I thought somebody would go Clemens at least. But I do. I mean, I'm a Pedro guy. Yeah, yeah I'm a Pedro guy. That that, that changeup was so dirty. Yeah. Um. All right. So, anyone else want to give a guess to how many uh, MVPs Babe Ruth won? If nobody has it, my mom has been blowing up my phone. She has it. <laughs> all right. The answer to your question, or the answer to the question, is one. Oh, that's insane. Apparently, so they, they didn't, didn't have an official it. MVP until um whatever year, like 1931. But he won the MVP whenever he could, whenever it was actually officially announced. Then when you won the MVP, you were not allowed to win another MVP. Awesome. So the year he the year he hit 60 home runs, he got zero MVP votes. <laughs> that seems right. That's what crazy. Cool is that? <laughs> that was... well, I guess they were just trying to spread the love back in the day. They didn't I guess. want any, uh, any Mike Trout's winning three or four <laughs> MVPs and uh, – in a short span. I mean, um, the, the name of the award is Most Valuable Player. <laughs> so. Well, so, hey, you know, brought up that thing a few years ago with Otani versus Judge. Judge breaks the home run record, but everyone's saying Otani yeah. should have won it. Mm-hmm. Who's more valuable? Well, then you can see Aaron Judge missed a lot of time last year, and that lineup was awful. Awful. Yeah. I'll say I'll say this year, three awful. three candidates in the AL. If, you want, if you're a betting man for this, I don't put a bet down for baseball. I will give my opinions. Since uh, we got a, a good sponsor up there at Hollywood Casino up in Charlestown, um, I said Gunner was my pick to win for the American League. But I think you have three choices Gunner, Juan Soto, and if you want to do the dark horse, it would be Bobby Wood Jr. But I think 50 50, you get a flip of a coin, you pick Gunner or Soto, I think you had a good chance. I actually take Bobby Wood Jr. Yeah, Bobby yeah. Wood's amazing. It, he scares oh, amazing. He scares the hell out of me every time he comes up the bat. I'd yeah. walk him. And he's and he's fast as hell too. He wants to steal bags. I mean, a lot of people steal bags against the Orioles. I guess that's maybe the Achilles heel is like, hey, we're on, we're running. Um, but that's a whole different story. Soto's probably gonna win it because of that short right field porch. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I love Dean Kramer was my teammate too. Love Dino and that whole situation there. That was a monster <laughs> shot. Oh, I was sitting there for that game. I was sitting there. I'm like, oh god, three two. I'm like, ah oh, shit, there it is. There's the moon. Gotcha. Don't hit the moon. There's the moon. Don't hit the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Ryan, what, so it, Ryan, did I miss this? Did he? Did Dean say something publicly? Publicly, I never <laughs> he heard did, this he didn't until. Say anything. Like how did like, exactly what what where did this story it come from? It almost seemed like Dean, Soto just assumed that he didn't like the shuffle. Uh, like yeah, I, I think didn't Dean, look like he said anything. What, what what are we talking about? Can okay, we give context so, so to when, this? So when no Soto idea. hit the ball to Saturn on that one, yeah. then he sh- he 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 stared down Dean at, to pimp it, and then when he rounded third base, stared at him again, and then in the dugout stared. Okay. Apparently, after the game, he said that you know Dean didn't like the shuffle. Blah blah blah. Uh, I think Dean, when he pitches, Dean sometimes gives you a look of like, you know, he might just be thinking F you, yeah. but he doesn't. That's just that's just like his resting yeah. face. Okay. And so he really wasn't paying attention or what well, didn't care at all about yeah. it. So he didn't say a word. So Soto thought he said, you know, was showing his displeasure. Dean didn't say anything. So, of course, though, okay. I text Dean and I'm like, did you mother F Soto? And he goes. Like, you know, I didn't say anything. I know. I said, I just wanted you to say something. But I said, it's teammate yeah. on teammate <laughs> crime for me, man. Like, you guys are both my teammates. Um, yeah. And he's like, yeah, sick, dude. You hit, a, you hit an absolute bomb off me. Like, I mean, uh, it was a, it was we, a cock we, shot. He should have. Yeah, 3-2 three, three, <laughs> right down the missile. Yeah, right down the and dick. Dean, and Dean's like, yeah, it went a long way. 
we won the game. So hey now, and I'm like, hey, yeah, good, good for you, Dean. Cool. Proud of you. You're yeah, I'll give up. I'll give up a solo shot every every inning if you want. Oh I mean, yeah. Who gives Who gives a shit? I'll take I mean, three out of four from you. Yeah. Like, cool. Oh yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. It, it was just something where I was like, where did this story come from? But I mean, I do. I got. I gotta say, I do love the chip on the shoulder from Dean that he that he does that because uh, I've never noticed it um because probably the camera never catches it but i mean i do i I love soto and i love the chip that he has and like the the cockiness he has because i think he wouldn't be the player that he is if he didn't have that but yeah yeah Yeah, um, dean gets pretty like sneaky fiery out there i love it he's uh he he, he, he's not i mean i think that was probably an issue like early on when he was like he had that he had a good start in his rookie year then that second year he was terrible and he was just like all over the place but it seems like he's gotten much better at reeling the emotions in but yeah when he gets a big k or something happens he he lets he lets it rip i love it it's fun to watch yeah now, yeah this is for you i mean and because you have the ear of the team or at least you, you get to hear a lot of the team do you feel like this team just has moxie and is just is pissed and just wants to win so damn bad because well, they've think, all grown up together yeah i think part of that and we say it's moxie or it's just they just have such a confidence that whoever's whatever's going on they're like we're gonna they believe they're just going to win. Yeah. And so down in spring training, for instance, and you're dealing with the unpredictability of Kyle Bradish, and John means, and what's going to happen. You're like, yeah, we're fine. We'll be okay. Last year when Felix Batista went down, I know what happened in the playoffs, but like, are the, is the team going to fall off now? Yeah. They're like, we'll be okay. Like they firmly believe the, the cliche and it's corny and, you know, uh, next man up but they're like yeah whoever we have we have confidence they're gonna play well okay like we can plug yeah. and play anybody in and we're gonna just beat you oh you're up four runs on us we're gonna come back and beat you like the amount of times they came back last year i think that's what terrifies teams now is that yeah. they needed to figure out last year if they could do it and then they figured out they can and then they figured out how good they can be and i think now they're just like the expectation is we're going to go and whoop your ass every night. Mm-hmm. And if we lose, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, sulk about it. We're going to come back and whoop your ass the next night. So that's why I look at this team. The biggest uh, compliment I can give them is, is that they can wash away any bullshit just like that. So like people can look at how, how bad that Oakland A's finish series was and mm-hmm. going, Oh, they lost two games, two or three. All right. Well, how did they bounce back? took three or four from the Yankees, yeah. right? You go to Cincinnati and you take all three. Oh, you have to lay a dud versus the Nats. Okay, how do you bounce back? You go into that, you take the lead. Oh, wait, you give it up. All momentum's to the Nats. Oh, and then you take their heart out again. So, like, yeah. and you were talking about adversity. I think this is why they're so good, is that they have been put in so many different scenarios that they don't feel uncomfortable with whatever it is. And I think that's a part that's going to help them this year. And you're right. The adversity matters to them. And the, now the thing is, though, when you get to the postseason, yeah. are you going to be ready when the stakes are the highest that you can keep those emotions? That's the one thing that they didn't have. They didn't have enough playoff experience last year. Yeah. And their insides were running. It didn't help that the Rangers were the hottest team to ever play on the road in the postseason. Yeah. That well, didn't we help. Go- we were cold going in too, and they were the hot, hottest team going in. Them in Arizona, yep. probably. Yeah, um, Garcia, Garcia, then also just also built in a lab potentially, just like yeah. strongest <laughs> yeah. dude, and anything he hit was gone. It was like yeah. holy hell, man! Like, and then Seager yeah. got going. It's like, what do you do, Corey yeah. Seager? He was supposed to be my roommate freshman year, and then he had the audacity to sign with the Dodgers turned out. He should have been really should have stabbed him in the heart. Like, um, how dare but, yeah. um, it worked out pretty well for Kyle. I did see uh, the, Cole, uh, the lineup. <laughs> the lineup just came out for tonight. I don't know if anyone saw pretty, what are we no, doing? What pretty we standard got? against the righty lineup. Mullins is back in center. Mateo at second. Um, right before we, we, we uh, started this pod, um, we, uh, we found out yeah, that, uh, that Kyle Stowers will be coming up. Um, Heston Kierstad is going to be going down. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure, on Twitter are going to be upset that it's not McKenna, but he is out of options. Kierstead does have options left, so this is why that's sure. that's probably happening. We're expecting Austin Hayes back later this week. We're expecting Grayson Rodriguez back soon. Um, so we've got a lot of uh, a lot of shuffling that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah. well, well, um, Ryan, yeah. as I sit here and listen to you talk, um, what's your biggest fear about the team? 
Like what 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 scares you? I think what we, we've been talking positive about the team yeah, so much. And, I, and I'm what super I'm you? super positive on in all the sense. I think for me, it's just what worries me is more so of guys. It really is understanding what your roles are going to be when it gets to crunch time mm -hmm. in the postseason. That's what I'm talking about, where I think you need to figure out the high stress situations. Because last year, even right now, what's the only position before Kimbrel situation right now? It was Batista was the closer last year. Then mm -hmm. Cano became the setup guy, but then no one else knew what their role was. So it was like, hey, Jacob Webb could be in, in the fifth inning or sixth inning. Bauman could be. Oh, Perez could. Aiken could. Heck, Cano could even be in that situation. I think for that's kind of the biggest concern I have for me is that the playoffs is a different breed. And it's so unpredictable. Are you going to be okay with whatever situation you're going to be put in? Because I think the guys last year were comfortable, but they weren't comfortable enough when they got to the postseason, mm -hmm. in my opinion. And so I thought Bradish pitched well. Grayson got off to a rough start, but everything else, there just was this uncomfortability with it. Um, but there's not a lot that really concerns me. Talent-wise, I don't think there's a team that is better than them in the American League. But you got to have – you got to be okay with – whatever is going to be thrown at you. And if yeah. you're going to be a top team and you got to have a buy again, you're going to have to deal with a team like the Rangers again. Like there, there's going to be a hot team. How do you stop it? And that's, that's really only my concern is just no, can you understand your roles in the bullpen really? And I want to bring up another thing that we talked about last week on the podcast was, um, do you think frustration will set in with some guys who aren't getting enough time? because we have an embarrassment of riches. I think that they learned last year. Westberg and Kowser learned last year. This is, I think, an interesting conversation, is that when you're in the minors, you know, and you're a top prospect, a couple things happen here. One, you're playing every day. You're probably hitting yeah. top of the order. Or if you're a pitcher, you're the guy. And then everyone tells you how good you are. You're like, you are great. You are unbelievable. And then you get to the big leagues and you realize, well, these guys – are pretty damn good and it's humbling because no longer you are no longer the guy in the minors you have to be one of the guys in the big leagues so for Kowser going from playing every day to then figuring out your role and Westbrook even said that he goes that was the hardest thing for me was wasn't playing every day how do you stay ready and how do you help the team and that messes with you I mean Kowser was talking about how and I saw it from him, and I knew it. And you could even go back and look at his at-bats this year to the last year. He didn't know how to sit for days and then still be the aggressive Colton Kowser mm -hmm. in the batter's box. He didn't know how to feel comfortable, and it showed. He didn't play, didn't play well when he did, got sent down. Westberg changed his mindset, so did Kowser. So for the guys coming up, you got to realize you are no longer the dude anymore. you got to figure it out. And Grayson, for example – Grayson could get away with mistakes in the minors. He couldn't get away with throwing a 98 mile an hour heater right down the, right down the cock. He, he just yeah. couldn't. And his problem when he got lit up was not stuff. It was the ability to locate when you have to. And the thing that I didn't like last year for him is he went away from his weapon, which is his fastball, but everything gets magnified in the big leagues. And, and, and Tim Mazo will probably tell you that too. Like talking to him, if you are not particular with how you got to approach people, the, they will make you pay. The good ones make you pay. Um, in the American League East, yep. you yep. do not have much room no, at all no. to uh, to uh, to battle it. So I think it's all good. But that, that's why I feel like Jackson. That's why I felt bad about Jackson Holiday was everyone thought that he was going to be just as good as Gunnar Henderson yeah. now. I'm like Gunner. Gunner's an MVP candidate. Jackson's 20 struggled. years old. He struggled. He was in 170 midway through May. Hell, my dad was in 103 in May, his Damn. rookie year. He went three for five, and he was like, "Man, I'm good." And then it was like, "Hey, well, guess what, Calvin? Reality check." <laughs> he went four for his next like 64 or whatever the number was, and it's a reminder: baseball is going to humble you. Yeah, for the game. but I mean, your dad's. But I mean, your dad stunk. So. 
He did. Uh, <laughs> he did. Also, yeah, he wasn't very good. He just figured it out. <laughs> also, also, so break breaking news real quick before before we hop off here. And I know Ryan. Yeah, you got to roll on it. Yeah, it's right now. Go. Yeah, I got it's you. All good. It's all Rock, good. Rock, Rock Kabaka retweeted by Zach Ballinger from the Ryan Rick, Ripken show. Uh, McKenna was just DFA'd uh, because they're recalling Hayes here, starting to feel starting oh, to feel wow. healthy. So um, that just that just broke through. I saw our group chat tweet or our group chat sent it through, and then. Uh, yeah, Rock and Zach Bollinger just just sent it out as well. Uh, McKenna just got DFA'd, um, so we'll see if he makes it through waivers. Probably not, I would assume, Cincinnati or, um, like uh, Milburn said, somebody like Seattle might pick him up as well. Um, I think Cincinnati should pick him up because he just smoked him. I mean, just, well, just they just saw him, yeah. <laughs> they just saw him. So I uh, just wanted to mention that before we go. Um, yeah. But yeah, right. let's uh, let's we, get out of here because Ryan. Yeah, let's Ryan, get Ryan we, out of here. We, we Ryan, thank you very Ryan much go. for your time, man. Much course, appreciated, dude. Course. Very much yeah, appreciated. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I, I apologize about my schedule and stuff, but this is great. Man. It's a lot of fun. You guys know. No need to. to me. I, I know, I know, but I feel bad. <laughs> but I, I, I promise, I, I like to do stuff like this. If, it's fun. I, if we could do it again, it'd be it'd be fantastic. Oh, well, we can definitely do that again. Yeah. I can even, if you want me to come over to the Chaucer, whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you want to do, but. I mean, I like Check out Ryan Ripkin show. More, a lot more. Uh, lot, lot more. Well, if you got, if you guys all want to, yeah, I mean, we can do it here. It's we got the space here. We yeah. can play NBA Jam. I can take someone <laughs> to the cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> well, when these two huckleberries from Ocean City and Indianapolis get over here, maybe we can all come over here and do it together. That'd be a, that'd yeah. be a phenomenal time. Yeah, man, we'll, we'll get it all together. Yeah. It's a fun yeah. time. We got it's a fun time. The thing that I what I love about this is the community. People like love baltimore one and two they're really excited about the team so we got a chance to talk about the community work with people that have the same passion and then Mm. enjoy it along the way like hell yeah Yeah. why not do it you know so you know if you guys ever want to come over here yeah i'm not inviting you it's ryan's space but i want to say one thing he took over our friend christian castro's studio who unfortunately passed away we played we him and i played in the golf tournament Mm-hmm. last monday um and it was an awesome setup and this is an awesome setup and so that would be great if we could all get over here and just hang out yeah. and have a good time talk some more sports well that's the thing too we want to make this a living studio and for christian that's the thing is like i'm coming into the space like i told you brian is um you know brad who also worked with christian he mm-hmm. gave me the opportunity to come in here because he said hey I, I like what you're doing and i want to help you out and when we came in here and Brad's what he was saying, he goes, but this has history in this place. Yeah. And you can see it. We talked about it. You guys can't see it on the camera. Yeah. But I'm a big guy that I, I love to keep things in remind of where where things started for things. So we, we got this, the how what's the correct way to describe it? The the bones of the studio stay. Yeah. And so that's yeah. the really that's yeah. the fun part of this. So yeah. whoever comes in is gonna see exactly what we're talking about. So yeah. you guys Make the trip up here, and we'll make it happen. Deal? It's awesome. Hell yeah. Hey, it's a deal, will. man. It's a deal. Um, I appreciate that. So that's a wrap. Let's wrap it up. Check out the Ryan Ripken show. It's one of the best. It's probably the best Orioles show on anywhere on the internet. Yeah. Uh, check out the Chaucer, Pig and Rooster. Thank you to Foy for coming on. Obviously, thank you, Ryan, for coming on. Yes. Uh, we'll have Tim Mesa on tomorrow. Uh, one of my college teammates, another one of my college teammates that we're going to try to get on here in a couple – probably in about a month here for the Astros when they're in town is Chaz McCormick. Um, we'll try to get him to stop by uh, Ryan's studio as well. So oh, I know. Um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Yeah. Go birds. Happy Go birds. Go birds, baby. Go birds, baby. See you boys. <laughs> Be good, man. Cheers y'all. <laughs>